11 and verse 10. I'm going to show you how you get the understanding of the Bible because you don't. You lack the understanding of the scriptures. You don't know your nationality. You are people. That's right. Ooh, you're a years ago. That's what you have to understand, but they call it the dark ages because why? They don't want you to know how great you really are. That's right. You get wisdom. Like I can tell the brother to read the scripture and he reads it, and I know how to interpret it for him. Read. Because he quoted John 3 16, one scripture, and we gave him 10 scriptures showing it what he really meant. Could he understand that? Absolutely not. Why not? Read that again. A good understanding uh -huh. of all that do his commandments. So that's the first thing. And what you should be teaching your wife, make sure you search in the scriptures first and foremost, brothers. Brothers usually don't have a problem with it, but sisters do. Don't go to Steve Harvey. Don't go to uh, Tyrese. Don't go to none of these people to search how you should fix your marriage or fix your problems. Read that again. Search the scriptures, uh -huh. for in them ye think ye have eternal life. So inside of these scriptures, we have eternal life. So that's our, that's our lifeline. That's where we must go. That's where we are commanded to go into the scriptures. All right? So you want to know what you should teach your wife? Go into the Bible and find out. All right? 2 Timothy 3 and 16. Let's go there. Because I want to make sure that y'all know that any counsel you get, anything you teach your wife, make sure it's coming out of the Bible. Read that. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God uh -huh. and is profitable for doctrine, uh -huh. for reproof, uh -huh. for correction, uh -huh. for instruction in righteousness. So all these scriptures are given for instruction, instruction, and in righteousness. So let's get into it. What's the first thing we must do before we can teach our wives, brothers? Who knows? Brother Elijah. Uh, second, um, first Corinthians 3, um, 2 and 15. Um, examine yourself. No, nope, not this time. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you could use that. Let me see what Brother uh, Shamil got to say. You could use that one. You can always. You ain't never wrong with that one, but I ain't taking that angle. Second Ezra 14 13. There you go. Hit it on the head. Hit it right on the head. Like I told y'all, very basic. Very basic. But I'm going to apply it into how you should be dealing with your wife. 2nd Ezra 14 and 13, read that. This is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 14, verse 13. Uh-huh. Now therefore, set thine house in order. Set your house in order, meaning yourself and your family. You gotta set that thing in order, read. And reprove thy people. And what? Reprove thy people. Read. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. Uh-huh. And now renounce corruption. Read. Verse uh, 15. I'm sorry, 14. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of man. Uh -huh. Put off now the weak nature. You got to put off that weak nature and set your house in order. When you see your wife out of line, it's your job, it's your responsibility to make sure it gets taken care of. It don't matter if they're going to get an attitude or they're going to slam a door. It's your job. If they wrong, you got to set it in order. Put off that weak nature. Read. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Uh -huh. And haste thee to flee from these times. Second Ezra 14 and 34. All right. So first and foremost, you got to set yourself and your house in order before you can teach your wife. What's the number one way you teach your wife coming into this truth? Both y'all brand new. What's the number one way you can teach your wife? And it goes along the lines of what we always say. There's two ways you can teach. So let's see who got it now. Brother Johan. Uh, by example. There you go. How now? Hold on. How can you be that example unto your wife of how she should carry herself? Keep or, it or treat you? I say that. How she? How can you be an example in how she should treat you? How can you set that example? Well, treat treat her with uh, the same respect. Right. But before that, what else? 
I mean, that's right. That's right. What else? What's another way she can look, though, and see? Not just in how you're dealing with her, but what? Don't get yourself up in the scriptures. I know. <laughs> you're right, you're right. The first way is how you treat her. That's one way. But I want to see it, Brother Manny. By keeping her on this. Uh, that's, that's correct as well, but it's something else I want. Alright, let's go to Judah 8, 24. The way you, the, me and Austin was talking about this the other day. When we first came to the truth, um, my wife was kind of nervous, his wife was a little nervous, but the, the way they understood that we were serious is that we kept going. Whether they were going to go or whether they agreed or whatnot, we set the example first and foremost. Uh, you don't want to go? All right, well, I'm going. So you can, whatever you want to do, that's cool. You know, you want, all right. I'm going to be at the school on the Saturday. And then once we got ourselves built up enough, we understood if we going, they got to be there, they came too. But you got to, you got to be that example. The, and what I was getting to was the way you treat your brothers, the way you treat leadership, that's the first example of how she's going to treat you. If leadership give you counsel and you don't listen, you go against what they're saying. How you think she gonna she gonna look at you? Y'all understand that? It goes hand in hand. All that stuff go hand in hand. Read that also. Judith eight twenty four. Judith chapter eight verse twenty four. Uh huh. Now therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren. That's y'all job. Y'all gotta show an example unto your wives in this truth. That's your first way you teach. You gotta be that example for you brothers that got a spouse that don't believe. You brothers that got a spouse that you know don't really want to be here. You got to push this truth at such a level that their belief is built off of, off of what you're doing. They're like, well, this, this really must be real. So I need to fall in line. Because what, what he's doing is serious. All right, read that again. Now, therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren. Uh -huh. Because their hearts depend on us. Read. And the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. All right, so that's the first thing. In getting your house in order, you got to be that example. You got to be that example. You got to make sure you're getting counsel. You got to make sure you're reaching out in communication. You're putting in the work. You're doing the fly mission, so on and so forth. You got to be that example unto your wife. That's the first teacher. That's the first teacher. All right, back to 2nd Ezra 14, 34. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 14, in verse 34. Uh huh. Therefore, if so, be that you will subdue your own understanding. So, a lot of y'all, we gotta, well, a lot of us, all of us, we gotta subdue our own understanding on one, what our wives are supposed to be doing. Because uh, it's another thing we were saying one day. A lot of us came into our relationships and we, we were 50 50 or it was 60 40 or whatever it is. You gotta subdue that understanding. That's not the case no more. You are the head of that household. Now, just because you're the head of that household don't mean um, you don't utilize your wife's skills. For example, let's say you're the one that's bad with money and she's the one with good. that's good with money. So now when you come into the truth, oh, well it says I'm the head of the household, I'm supposed to rule the house. So now you take over the finance. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is what you say goes. It's no 50-50 it's no in the truth. You got to subdue whatever your thoughts were of how marriage should be and filter it by the scriptures. All right, read that again from the top. Verse 34. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding uh -huh. and reform your hearts, <clears throat> your hearts, you shall be kept alive, and after death you shall obtain mercy. Right, so you gotta, you gotta make sure you subdue your own understanding and guide your wife and yourself according to the scriptures. So, 1 Timothy 3, verse 1. Can I bring up yeah. a point? Yep. Let's go to Judith 8 and um, 14 real quick. Judith. Let y'all get it. So um, we're going to this scripture just to get a point to uh, what I was just bringing out in regards to uh, respect. Respect for leadership and the, uh, the order written over 1 Corinthians 11. Let's read this real quick. Judith chapter 8 and verse 14. For you cannot find the depth of the heart of man. Neither can you perceive the things that he thinketh. Then how can you search out God that have made all these things and know his mind or comprehend his purpose? Nay, my brethren, provoke not the Lord our God to anger. Jump down to 16. Verse 16. Do not bind the counsels of the Lord our God. For God is not as man that he may be threatened. Neither is he as the son of man that he should be wavered. So we went to this scripture to show, show what? When it comes to God, it's 100%. 
All right, we're not on the same level as God. So in regards to a marriage, it's the same thing. It's the man, which is 100%, and it's the woman that is subject unto the man. So everything will go easier if we did what? If we just were obedient to God, we wouldn't be in this situation. Same thing in the marriage. But God is a God of righteousness, right? He's not wavering. He's consistent. When he speaks, his word stands. That's how we have to be as men. That's what we was bring, uh, officers was bringing out in second edges. You got to get yourself together first. Be that example. So when you do say something, it's 100% and she follows. All right. I'll pray. I'll pray. First Timothy 3, start at verse 1. This is the book of First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. This is a true saying. Uh -huh. If a man desire the office of a bishop. What's a bishop, brothers? When it says if a man desire the office of a bishop, what's a bishop? Oh, go. Hands, hands, hands. Okay. Leader. There you go. That's all they're saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, meaning a leader, that's that is a soldier, that's a brother, that's a that's an officer, that's a deacon, captain, so on and so forth. You're just a leader. And all of y'all are leaders. Alright, read that. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, uh -huh. the husband of one wife. Now, that blameless is going into you being that what? That example. That example. Because guess what? Not saying you're not going to mess up, but you are blameless, meaning you fix it. You keep it moving. Keep going, officer. The husband of one wife, uh -huh. vigilant, uh -huh. sober, uh -huh. of good behavior, Three. given to hospitality, apt to teach, Three. not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient. Not a brawler, not covetous. Uh -huh. One that ruleth well his own so house. So first thing you must do, brothers, is you must rule your own house. You must rule your house. Exactly what the officer was just going into. It's not suggestions. It's not opinions. It's statements. Read. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. Uh -huh. For if a man know not how to rule his house, his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Right. So... You must rule your house first and foremost. Act 8, 27. How do you learn how to rule your house? Because, well, I'm going to hear the scripture later, but today we, we haven't been taught those things. We have not been taught those things. The earth is out of order. All right? The description in Ezekiel says, um, I can't even paraphrase it right now. What does it say uh, about the woman? The woman. The woman now. Uh, let's get it. Ezekiel 34 and 30, uh, 31. I can read it, but I can only even know what it said. 34 and 31. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 31. Uh huh. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture are men. Uh huh. And I am your God. So the understand, Lord. the most I is dealing with the men first and foremost. But in today's society, Jeremiah 31 and 22. That's what I want. Jeremiah 31 and 22. The most high is dealing with you men, first and foremost. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 31. You said 32? 22. 22. All right. Because the reason why we have to go over these classes is because of this scripture right here. Read that. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Uh -huh. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. Uh -huh. A woman shall compass a man. What does that mean, brothers? Brother Shamir. Talking about a woman taking charge. There you go. In today's society, now a woman has taken charge over the men. The men have lost the preeminence. We have lost our position. We have lost that rank, that respect, that order that was in place for so long. That's not the case anymore. All right, go back to um, Acts 8. This is the book of Acts, chapter 8, and verse 27. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, uh -huh. who had the charge of all of her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Esaias the prophet. Uh -huh. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Mm -hmm. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Esaias, and said, Understandest what thou readest? And he said, How can I, 
except some man should guide me. And he desired Philip he would that he would come up and sit with him. So understand, the only way you're gonna get the proper understanding of these scriptures to disperse that information unto your wife is you first and foremost must humble down to whoever that man is or those men that are teaching you the scriptures. So then, therefore, you can take that knowledge and bring it back unto your wife. Going again into being that example. Everything just reciprocates every level. We go from the most high to Christ, Christ to men, men to woman, woman unto the children. If there's a break in that chain, then that, that's where it doesn't work. If you're the brother that don't call and get counsel, you're the brother that don't ask no questions, you're going to be the brother that's having problems in your marriage, so on and so forth. Why? Because you're not getting the proper instruction to take back to your wife to build her up. All right? Proverbs 8 and 4. So somebody has to teach you what to teach your wife. Because a lot of times we don't know. You really don't know. And if you do know the problems, you don't know the solutions. Read that. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 8 verse 4. Uh -huh. Unto you, O man, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. So it says, unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. Just going back to the same thing. He's going to disperse that information unto you. Not saying that the wife can't bring you into the truth, but once y'all there, guess what? It's your job to make sure that things go, go right. All right? That's your job. So what's the first thing you should teach your wife? What's the first thing you should teach your wife? What y'all brothers think? Let me hear brother Jediah, a single brother. Let me see what a single brother. Don't, don't give me a simple answer. Single brother. What have you got? I'm starting off with the laws. No, sit down. That's right, but no. Because if she know how to wear fringes, but she, no. No, don't start with the laws. All the Bible is laws. Let's see. Let's see, brothers. The whole Bible is lost. So that's a yes, but a no. Nah, brother, scared. Nah, come on. Let me hear something. Let me hear something. Psalms 111 and 10? No. No. And, and y'all answers ain't wrong. It just ain't what I'm looking for. So y'all don't feel too bad. How she should, how she should conduct herself as a woman? Uh, kind of. Let me see Elijah. Um, in peace and five and nine. No. Okay, okay. Um, the order of the there you go. Okay. There you go. Any organization. What's the first thing you must have, brothers? Order. You got so this likewise in a marriage. The number one thing that you brothers must establish first and foremost is the order in that household. You if you don't get that, ain't nothing working from that point on. I don't care how many precepts, how many fringes, long dresses, I don't care how much you teach her that. If she doesn't understand the order in that household, like we said, when it's 50-50, what does that really mean? She running. She running it. So first and foremost, you gotta establish the order, because if you don't, you give her to these scriptures, but in the back of her mind, she's still running it. That's what it is. So you gotta establish the order first and foremost. First Corinthians 11 and verse one. Let's get that. Y'all gotta understand, these are the scriptures that you go over. Your wife in the attitude, go to first Corinthians 11. Is that so? I'm just telling you, I'm giving you the instructions. It ain't the deep stuff. You don't go to Revelation, you ain't gotta go all these other. Go to first Corinthians chapter 11. We gonna read it. This is the book of first Corinthians chapter 11 verse one. Uh -huh. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So Paul saying, this is what Christ would want us to do. I'm following Christ, so do what I do. Read. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, uh -huh. and keep the ordinances. The what? And keep the ordinances. The laws, like you said, right, brother Jedi? You said the laws, but when you say the laws, you just saying the whole Bible, so I can't give you that. All right, read. As I delivered them to you. So this is the laws that Paul delivered unto us that he got from Christ. Read. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. And the what? The head of the woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. So understand, brothers, first and foremost, are y'all equal? Is, the, is that husband and wife equal in the scriptures? No. Sir. No. No. You got to get that out of these sisters' brains. You single sisters, y'all are not equal to the men. You married sisters, y'all are not equal to the men. Understand that first and foremost. You must understand there must be order. A lot of y'all brothers work jobs. I work a job. 
If you think you're the same as your boss, what would that make you liable to do to your boss? Talk to him a certain way, mm -hmm. look at him a certain way, treat him a certain way. Does that happen in any of y'all jobs? Can you talk to your boss? Like, no, it don't happen. That don't happen. So why is it in a marriage we think that there's no, there's, there's, no, there's no equality? We're going to both get the kingdom, but in different manners. It's going to be a different way you get the kingdom than how I get the kingdom. Because I got to do different things that you're doing. All right? From there, you have something? Where are you going to start? 33. I'm getting that. Well, uh, which one? Yeah, 18. Yeah, I'm going there. I'm going there. Uh, jump down to verse 8. Also. Verse 8. For the man is not of the woman. For the what? For the man is not of the woman. The man is not of the woman. Unlike what they teach in Egyptology, right? They say we come from the woman because the woman give birth to us. Nah. You can smash that right here. So if you go, you at camp, brothers, and they say well, the woman is God because they give birth to, to, to children. Read that again. For the man is not of the woman. Read. But the woman of the man. The woman is of the man. That doctrine smash. Read verse 9. Verse 9. Neither was the man created for the woman, uh -huh. but the woman for the man. Y'all see that? Make sure y'all understand that. The woman was created for the man. If you create a car, are you going to try to make it fly? No, that's not its purpose. The woman is created for the man. So when you got a woman that's married to you, trying to do things that are outside what you want her to do, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. But I'm going to go into the details of how you should make sure you teach her the correct things so she can fulfill her purpose. Because the woman, naturally, they're not going to do what they're supposed to do. You have to guide them. And that's not what I'm saying. That's what the scripture said. And I'm going to prove it with the scriptures. And guess what? When they out of line, where you go, brothers? To the scriptures. To the scriptures. And if they got a problem, who they got a problem with? God. They got a problem with God. Not us. Let the scriptures do the talk. All right? Uh, Genesis 2. Let's get it from the beginning. Genesis 2 and verse 18. And the reason why I'm going over this class is, like I said, marriage will always be an issue. Not an issue, but it will always be a subject that we can always get better in. Alright, we can always get better at marriage. Especially with the woman. Because I tell these brothers this all the time. As wicked as you were in the world, right? Who did the scripture say sin came from? Woman. The woman. So if y'all think y'all was bad, what do you think was going on the other side of the room? Ah, uh, okay. Uh. You see that quiet still, right? Uh, Genesis 3. Genesis 3. Yep, 2, 2, I'm sorry. Genesis 2 and 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Uh -huh. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. Uh huh. I will make him and help me for him. Read. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field. Read. And every fowl of the air. And brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Hold on. We skipped over 18 too quick. That's my fault. Read it again. Verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. It's not good that man should be alone. So, like I was saying, if you get tired of, dry, of walking to work every day, you're going to create a vehicle to ease your travel to work. For example, first we had a, a bike. Might have had a skateboard. Had a scooter. And eventually got to a car. The most high God says, you know what? This man should not be alone. So the first thing he created was that woman. The purpose is to please and serve who? Man. The man. Read, read the uh, end part of 18. I will make him and help me for him. He will make a help that is meet for him. Meaning going to do exactly what he needs to get done. That's a, when a woman in her natural use, that is her job. That is her job. But like we say, a lot of... 10 out of 10 women in the world, when they hear these scriptures, they're like, ah, that don't sound right. That don't sound right. But that's what the Bible says. Like the brother just quoted the scriptures. It says we got to be transformed by the what? Renewing of our mind. In what? These scriptures. Y'all got to come out of Babylonian ways of thought. And the train of thought that they teach you in the world. That's not correct. That is not correct. All right? Uh, jump down to verse 21, also. Verse 21, uh -huh. and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Mm -hmm. 
and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. Right. That's the proof that's showing you that woman came of man, not the other way around. Read. And brought her unto the man. And did what? Brought her unto the man. So when this woman was formed, he didn't say, all right, take some time to yourself. I know you need some time to yourself to get your mind together, get your brain right. No. no. He formed her, brought her unto the man. Right unto her purpose. Read. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones. Uh-huh. And flesh of my flesh. Read. She shall be called woman. Uh-huh. Because she was taken out of man. And understand, Adam didn't take a, a, a position of not knowing what's going on. He said, all right, she going to be called woman. Because she was taken out of me. He led from the jump. That's your job. She didn't have no direction. She had one purpose. She looking to you of what to do. Read. Verse 24. Verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his mother, I'm sorry, his father and his mother, uh -huh. and shall cleave unto his wife. Read. And they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. All right. Genesis 3 and 16. Genesis, Genesis 3 and 16. Chapter 3, verse 16. Uh-huh. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow uh -huh. and thy conception. Read. And sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Read. And thy desire shall be unto thy husband. And what? Thy desire shall be unto thy husband. There you go again. You single sisters, if you're ready for your desire to be unto another man, your purpose is to another man. That's when you're ready for marriage. If you still worry about yourself, how are you and what is about you, 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 that ain't what you want. Not righteously. If you want to be, well, I see all the time, sisters take pictures and post Proverbs 31. Yeah. We're going to read that chapter today. Not there. Not there. No one near that. Read that again. Verse uh, 16. The, and he shall what? And thy desire. And thy desire. Shall read. be to thy husband. Your purpose. When you wake up in the morning, how can I please my husband? And guess what? We're going to touch it. If your husband go to work at 7, and you getting up at 8.30, is your desire to your husband? No. Can't be. Mm. Uh oh. We're going to get that. Read it again. And thy desire uh -huh. shall be to thy husband. Read. And he shall rule over thee. And he shall be a democracy with you. And he shall rule over thee. And he shall take votes. And he shall rule over thee. It's your job to rule. Rule. It's, it's not 50-50, brothers. Go ahead. I got a point in that rule. And understand, brothers, I know being young in the truth, a lot of brothers, when they um, come into the understanding of the order, they like to automatically think that the wife knows what he what he wants. So in a point I want to bring out in regards to ruling, when you rule, you do what? You set the order. So meaning you set up expectations. So, okay, if you like certain things, all right, tell her you like certain things so you can hold her accountable. All right, so you can judge the matter righteously. If she's not performing the duties, okay, then explain to her, okay, why aren't you, you know, ask, why aren't you doing this, why aren't you doing that, so on and so on. But make sure uh, communication is always there in regards to ruling, all right, to make sure it goes to, um, you know, how you want it to pan out. And we're going to touch that too. Uh, go to Sirach 33.9. So it says, he shall rule over thee. Sirach 33 and verse 18. And like the officer said, when we say rule, that don't mean... <laughs> We're going to touch a line in the house. Lord will not do a, the other half of this class, how you should be a husband. But when it says rule, that means you're making sure things are going to according to your purpose. It's not going according to her purpose, according to your purpose. Read that. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 33, and verse 18. Uh -huh. Hear me, O ye great men of the people. Read. And hearken with your ears, uh -huh. ye rulers of the congregation. Read. Give not thy son uh -huh. and wife, uh -huh. thy brother uh -huh. and friend, power over thee while thou livest. Now, brothers, guess what? Uh, I heard a sister say that the, the husband will change as he grows in the truth. All right? If you're not changing, are you in the truth going to change? Because a lot of y'all, y'all might be under your wife right now. And then two years from now, they might say, you know what? He's changing. No, you're not changing. You, you, well, I mean, you are changing, but righteously. If you're seeing less of your husband because he's doing more work in the truth, that's a good thing. Right. That's a, that ain't a bad thing. Oh, he don't listen to me as much. That's a good thing. All praises. 
That's a good thing that he ain't listening to you. If you ain't coming with scriptures anyway. Right. All right. So read that again. Verse 19. Give not thy son and thy, wife, uh -huh. thy brother and friend, uh -huh. power over thee while thou livest. Right. So if you say ain't nothing go through to him unless it's that Bible, that's a good thing. But if you're in a worldly mind state, you thinking that's bad. He never listened to me, blah, blah, blah. That's nonsense. The scripture says don't give nobody power over you. Nobody. Read. And give not thy goods to another, uh -huh. lest it repent thee. Read. And thou entreat for the same again. Read. As long as thou livest and have breath in thee, uh -huh. give not thyself over to any. So nobody has the preeminence over you at any time. It shouldn't be nothing that sister can say, nothing she can do, nothing she can wear to manipulate you from what these scriptures say. Read. For better it is that thy children should seek to thee uh -huh. than that thou should stand to their courtesy. You see that? You never stand to nobody courtesy. Your wife should, you should never be on your beck and call to your wife or to your children. It says they supposed to stand to your courtesy. Can I bring an example? Yes. So if, for example, brothers, if you and your wife, I guess she's mad about something, right? You know how in the world they say, oh, you got to sleep on the couch. Right. That's, that's a joke. Yep. I find that hilarious. Yep. Yeah, right. So if we're at odds, if you're mad, you go take yourself somewhere else. This is my house. Yep. I sleep in my bed. If you're mad, you can leave. I don't care. Yep. Y'all understand that, right? Yep. That's how you got. That's how you got to be. A woman speaking bad. That's that's a joke. That's comedy. Yep. I know myself. I don't deal with that. No. She had a spirit. All right, you can go. I don't, I don't give a damn. You you be mad. Go be mad. I don't care. But when you're ready to talk, come talk to me. We're cool. I'll be fine. I'll forgive you. But that's the spirit you got to roll in. That's what the scripture is talking about. Yep. Can't you must have the premise? Cause like we said. 50-50 equals what? Yeah. She ruled in the house. That's not happening. That's not happening. Not in the scriptures. Not the men that this Bible is telling us to be. Read verse uh, 22. Uh, verse 22. And all thy works keep to thyself the preeminence. Leave not a stain in thine honor. The scripture says when you don't have that preeminence, when you ain't carrying your household like that, you leave a stain to your name. That's what the scripture says. So you got to make sure you keep what she understands. Guess what? If you're doing something for the truth, say a brother at camp and she pull up with the kid and you got to watch the kid. I got to go. Sure. Drive off. That's a stain. That means you ain't ruling your house, brother. Something wrong in that picture. Something is wrong with that picture. Like I say this all the time. My wife's not finna hand me my son while I'm up in teaching class. That's not finna happen. Not while I'm at camp. Now, what, you got to have that privilege. They got to understand that. And sisters are simple. They're going to see how far they can go. Right, right. So, in a righteous sister, she will understand that and not even attempt to do that. But you got to teach her. Like, also, she's going over. All right, from there, Psalms 82 and 5. This is why you got to make sure you have that preeminence. This is why you got to carry yourself in such a manner. Psalms chapter 82 and verse 5. This is the book of Psalms chapter 82 and verse 5. Uh-huh. They know not, neither will they understand. Neither will they understand. Read. They walk on in darkness. They walk on in darkness. Let's talk about our people in the world. Read. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. All the what? Foundations of the earth are out of course. Because guess what? The earth is out of course. You got a woman with the last name Johnson hyphen. Uh, Jenkins. That's disrespectful. Yeah. Or they even taken, you take the woman names. The earth is out of course. What is that telling you? Brother, you are owned. If she even think for a second, she gonna take her name over. It's like, what the? And some of y'all brothers, y'all got your wife's name inside. You can repent. You gotta change your name to Israel anyway. So it's alright if that happened to you. Alright? But listen, I'm telling you. Just don't tell nobody. Yeah, just don't tell nobody. <laughs> the earth is out of course. It's out of course. That's why you must carry yourself in a certain manner. Because we ain't right and these sisters ain't right. So we all got to abide in these scriptures. If not, it's going to be chaos. Sirach 36 and 24. Hey, can we read on the verse on the 6 on that same? Yep. On the chapter? Oh, this is uh, Psalms, chapter 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods. Are what? 
are gods. You are gods, brothers, on the earth. Nope. All right, everything is out of course. Right. Um, who fault is it? It's all fault. Um, we the ones that got to stand back up and get it right. All right, on the God has given us the blueprint to follow, the brain to follow. All right, on the get your brain in this book. All right, good point, good point. Sirach 36 and 24. This is Sirach chapter 36 and verse 24. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession, uh -huh. a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. So it says, he that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. So that's yours. Your wife is yours. That's your first possession. Because from her, you begin your family. All right? Then you begin generations. You have a whole family line. So that's your first start. That's your first start in beginning your legacy. All right? And it says, a help like unto himself. That's very key. Like the officer brought out. In ruling your house, you must give everybody under your rulership, you got to give them tasks to get done. A, a great king, everything is what in a great kingdom? Everything is what? Well ordered. Well ordered. How can your wife be under your kingdomship, or whatever the word is, and you don't give her the orders of how you want your house rent? You're mad because it ain't nothing in the and it ain't nothing to eat in the morning. Well, did you tell her you're a breakfast person? You mad because she didn't cook the eggs uh slightly burnt the way you like them? Did you ever tell her? You mad because uh, your bed wasn't made when you left? Did you tell her? You mad because she didn't put ketchup on the side? Did you tell her? So on and so forth. I'm just giving you an example. A uh, help like unto himself. You got to tell her exactly what you want. Because sisters are simple. They're simple. So you got to tell them oh, exactly what you want three or four times and make sure you get done. They're going to mess up. So and, have and hold them accountable when it don't get done. Right. So read that again, verse 24. Verse 24. He that getteth a wife, beginneth a possession. Uh huh. A help like unto himself. Uh huh. And a pillar of rest. A what? A pillar of rest. So, a pillar of rest. You got to let her know what is that pillar of rest to you. To some of you, that might be coming home and you have something to eat. Some of you, you want to lay down and you don't want something to eat. Maybe you, you like to eat late at night, so she don't need to cook right when you get home. For me, when I get home, I want to have my computer set up so I can, when I walk in, I can drop my stuff off and I can go right and I can start editing right then. Bring me something to eat in an hour or so and then I'll eat. But you got to explain what is that pillar of rest to her. Because in her mind, she has one conception uh, of what it should be done, right? And who taught her whatever she got in her brain? Esau. Esau. Uh, her mother that ain't never been married telling her what to do. Or Beyonce. Or Beyonce, or whoever else. So you got to tell them exactly what you want so they can be that pillar of rest. This is the part what I wanted. When I said uh, her opinion is wrong and it's going to lead you out. It's going to lead you the wrong path. Read verse 25. This is the scripture. When they go on to their own opinion and their own thoughts, read that. Where no hedge is. Where no what? No hedge is. Who's that hedge, brothers? No, Y'all are. According to what? When you're using what, you're the head. The scriptures. You and your usage of the scriptures is that hedge to your wife. Read that again. Where no hedge is, uh -huh. the, the possession is spoiled. What was the possession? The wife. So it says, well, there's no hedge for that woman. She is spoiled. Let you know, if they go off and do their own thing, what's going to happen? It's going to be a bad deal. It's going to be a bad deal. That's why we tell y'all, don't listen. Don't listen. That's what the scripture says. It says where there's no hedge, where you aren't, the possession is for it. Y'all understand it? Yes, sir. Is that simple? Because I know if I gave my wife a certain amount of money and I didn't tell her, don't do this, it ain't going to be no money. And then she's going to be looking at me like, what you mean? You didn't know we had to get this, 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 this done? I got one for you. Yeah. Now, uh, a few more. I mean, me and my wife, cool. It's, it's all good. It doesn't matter. So there's a situation that just occurred. I need some shirts for work, right? I was like, babe, can you go give me some shirts? All right. I got home. I was like, damn, she did a great job. These are the nicest shirts I ever had for work, ever. I was like, babe, how did you how did you do that? They fit, they fitted everything. 100% had the fringes on them. I'm like, damn, that, I got a good wife. All praises. I said, babe, how much did these cost? 
um, two hundred and something dollars. I'm like, I was like, well, um, why would you do that? Well, they nice shirts. I'm like, you know what? I ain't tell her where to go. I ain't tell her what, uh, how much to spend. I ain't do that. So you know, I said, you know what, man? Thank you. These are some nice shirts. These are nice shirts, and I'm gonna wear these shirts. All right, all praises. But it's showing you what the hedge, right? If you don't give the order, if you don't give a you know, uh, straight commandment, it's going to go not as planned. All right? It's going to be wrong. spoiled. It's going to go wrong. But, hey, but it happens. It happens. Just bring that up. So y'all got to make sure she understand. When, when you shut her down, you got to prove it to her why. I'm not listening to that. I'm not listening to that. Not saying you can't never, because some of y'all got some dumb ideas to you, brothers. But, <laughs> all right? Make sure when you know she's wrong and she's upset, go to the scripture. Go to the scriptures, all right? Uh, Sirach 25 and verse 24. Sirach chapter 25 and verse 24. Dealing with the same thing. And all of this is falling under the order. Why certain things are certain ways, all right? The scripture says, with no head is the possession is for. Why? Because you're the head. Y'all not equal. Y'all are not equal, all right? Read that. This is the book of Sirach chapter 25 and verse 24. Uh-huh. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Read. And through her, we all die. So of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her, we all die. Which is why when there's no hedge, the possession is spoiled. Hence, verse 25. Verse 25. Give the water no passage. Who can explain that? Not Obadiah. Brother Elijah. Um, give her philosophy no passage in, in your life. Okay, that's one way. I like that. That's correct. What else? But what is it really saying? Give the water no passage. Give her no, give her no leeway to rule. To what? Give her no leeway to rule. Like that. Like that as well. All right. We're gonna read the end of it, and then I want y'all explain it. Read that off. Give the water no passage. Neither a wicked woman liberty to gather broad. All right, now we can explain it. Bill says. Bring it up. <laughs> Don't get hold on. I lead way to rule. <laughs> What's that booty time? <laughs> All right, that's good. That's good as well. Okay. <laughs> I want the specific, because it says gad, to gad a bride. You something else, brother. To give her no liver to do anything she want to do. Okay, yeah. Try to use words, not in the, the verses, brothers. <laughs> Try to bring it out for me. Expound. I'm just playing with y'all. Gad abroad. Gad abroad. Gad abroad. What does it mean to gad? Yeah, um, is it saying uh, whatever you set up in the house, uh, let her like um, have her not go outside of that, go outside of like um, how you saying? At first, the yeah, kingdom, whatever you set up, let her like not go. I guess in, I'm trying to think that the water probably means you know the word. So if you set up something in the house, then that's it, you know. Okay. When your foot is down, leave it down. When your foot. <laughs> When you put your foot Pass the mic, brother. Pass the mic. Put his foot down. Foot down. Uh, to say the authority over the man. Pass the mic. Gad, brothers. Gad abroad. Give her no liberty to gad abroad. Give the water no passage. Ophenio. Pass it up. It's going into a certain specific. Y'all, all y'all write doctrines and all that and going against the order. That's right as well. Like, it's saying, like, keep her at home. Like, don't have her going, like, Everywhere, like out everywhere. Okay, that's right, that's right. It's another word, another word. Y'all right. Because if, if all of it falls under this. Give an order, direction. Okay, that's right. 
Hey, I'm trying to bench him right back there. All right, see what he got. This brother, is this brother even 20 yet? This brother's not ready. Uh, does it mean don't let her talk? There you go. Oh, Thank brother. you. Yeah, I was just asking the question, brother. I was just asking was he 20. That's all I was saying. <laughs> Tell her to keep her mouth shut. That's what it's saying. Don't give her liberty to talk. Because how did, how did Eve uh, uh, trick uh, Adam? Well, talk in. Don't get, that's my wife get mad at me all the time because she talk, I don't really be listening. Like, uh-huh, uh-huh. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> you know what you said? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so you know exactly what you said. Oh, and we both know. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's what it is. But the talking, brothers, that's what it, the talking. Don't listen to the nonsense. Shut it down, leave, don't do that. Right. And the scriptures tell you to do it. Like I say, what can we always go to back it up? The scriptures. The scriptures. Read that again, verse 25. Uh, Sirach, chapter 24, verse 25. Give the water no passage. That nonsense, shut it down. Don't let it, don't let it go. Read. Neither a wicked woman liberty to gad abroad. Right. Talking, just running off at the mouth, day in, day out. Don't let that happen, brothers. Do not let that happen. Just like the officer saying, the reason why you don't let it happen because it's going to eventually what? What's, what's it going to eventually do? Uh, Brother Jadai. It might sway your understanding. Exactly. It's, it's going to sway your judgment. You hear her talking about a certain sister. Oh, this sister do this. This sister do that. And all of a sudden, you can be like, you know what? Hey, that sister wicked, man. That sister wicked as hell. Or oh, this brother do that, da 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 What you do is say, oh, oh you got a problem with the sister? Okay, call him. Yep. Call him. Go ahead. And shut it up. You shut it down right then and there. Because, just like Proverbs 12 and 26, you keep being around that, it's going, it's going to affect your spirit, and then your judgment is going to be all, all jacked up. I do that to my wife all the time. She tell him about something, I say call him. Instantly. Right. Then she get quiet. Oh, yep. all right, well, mm -hmm. I guess it wasn't an issue then. <laughs> that simple. I can't do nothing for you. You, you got a description saying if you got a problem with your brother, you gonna speak to him and them alone. That's what it says. Don't tell me. Cause all I'm gonna do is tell you to go talk to them. And that's how your brothers roll. Don't be, don't be your spokesman for your wife. Right. You coming up to us, hey officer, uh, my wife got a problem with such and such. Alright, well handle it, brother. I don't know what the hell you want me to do. I can't do nothing for you. Makes don't, you look bad. Yes. Makes you look real stupid. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. All right, so don't give a liberty to speak. Don't give a liberty to speak. And, I, and this is all going into order, showing you that you have that authority to shut her down. Numbers 30. Yeah. Let's go to Numbers chapter 30 and verse 3. This is the book of Numbers chapter 30 and verse 3. If a woman... I'm sorry, I'll let you go. And this is this is the last scripture we're gonna deal with. We're dealing with the order. This is the most heaviest one when it goes into the order. We read all those scriptures about the man is the head of the household, the woman desire is supposed to be to her husband. Don't give your woman, the wife, or children preeminence over you. Alright? It says where there's no hedges, the possession is spoiled. Showing you all these different things that you are not on the same level as her. You ain't. Read that. Numbers chapter 30 verse 3 uh -huh. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord uh -huh. And bind herself by a bond Being in her father's house in her youth So she made a, a vow in her father's house Read Verse 4 And her father hear her vow mm -hmm. And her bond wherewith she hath bound her soul And her father shall hold his peace at her Then all her vows shall stand and every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. Uh -huh. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth, uh -huh. not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. Somebody explain to me what just happened. What did it just say? Brother Jadai. Um, in this verse, it's saying that um, the woman probably promised to do something, but it was up to the father in order to allow her to be able to make the promise in the first place. There you go. To make it official, it had to go to their father's ear. So, did that woman have any power? No, sir. Are they on the same level? 
No, sir. Keep reading. Verse 6. And if she had at all an husband when she bowed, or uttered aught out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vow shall stand. Read. And her bounds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, of none effect. Of what? Of none effect. Read. And the Lord shall forgive her. So who has that same power once she becomes married? The husband. Showing you, are they equal? No. Y'all are not equal. That's what I'm telling you. These sisters do not understand that. It's your job to make sure you teach them and guide them in the scriptures that they know we are not the same. We are not equal. We're not on the same level. Alright? And these scriptures are letting you know that. Keep reading. Verse 9. But every vow of a widow and of her that is divorced, wherewith they have bound their souls, shall stand against her. Uh -huh. And if she vowed in her husband's house, or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her, and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand, mm -hmm. and every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband hath utterly made them void on the day he heard them, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows, or concerning the bond of her soul, shall not stand. Uh -huh. Her husband hath made them void, and the Lord shall forgive her. Read. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her husband may establish it, or her husband may make it void. So you can say yay or nay. You have that judgment. She don't have that call. You have that final call. Keep reading. Verse 14. But if her husband altogether hold his peace at her from day to day, then he establishes all her vows. Or, I'm sorry, or all her bonds which are upon her, he confirmeth them because he held his peace at her in the day that he heard them. But if he shall anyways make them void after that he had heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. Read. These are the statutes. These are the what? The statutes. No, these are suggestions. The statutes. Read. Which the Lord commanded Moses uh -huh. between a man and his wife. Between a man and his wife. Look what relationship he, he compares it to. Read. Between the father and his daughter. Uh -huh. Being yet in her youth in her father's house. So, you have that same authority as a father over her daughter when you're married. Do y'all understand that? Yes, sir. And also, in that respect, does a daughter talk to her father any type of way? No, but we're going to give it even higher than a father. She's supposed to treat you as what? As Christ, as Lord, as Lord. All right, so now we're going to get into, you got to teach her what you like. Because obviously here, we're going to go through a few sections, a few scriptures on that. Because these are the things that you must teach her. The first and foremost thing of any great company or organization, you must have what? Order. You must have order. So that's why we went, we hit that first. You gotta establish that order. Now, once you establish that order, now you can teach her what you like. So she can she can be that help me. She can be that pillar of rest. Sirach 37 and 12. Sirach chapter 37, verse 12. Uh-huh. But be continually with a godly man. Uh-huh. That's well, for your sisters. Make sure you find a godly man. Read. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments we went, of the Lord. We went over that a lot. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments at least a year. You want to see him keep all the feast days, so on and so forth. Even though that ain't really a good limit, but that's something. Read. Whose mind is according to thy mind. Who's what? Whose mind is according to thy mind. You must make sure your wife's mind is according to your mind. But it's your job to get her to that point. You got to train her up. Of what you like, what you dislike, what you want, what you don't want, so on and so forth. Her mind got to be according to your mind. Read. And will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. Right. That's going into the man. If you if you got a good husband, guess what? Miscarriage happened, he'll make he ain't, he ain't going to hold it against you, so on and so forth. He's going to make sure he's there for you when a situation like that occurs. Uh, Psalms 45 and 10. 
when it says making sure your mind is according to whose mind is according to your mind. Psalms 45 and 10. Because this is what happens a lot of times. Her mind is not according to your mind. I'm going to show you who her mind is according to. Read that. Psalms chapter 45 and verse 10. Uh huh. Hearken, O daughter, and consider, and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people. Forget what? Also thine own people. The scripture says, forget thine own people. It's a cut. Alright, it says forget thine own people. Because yet a lot of times my wife got a million wives tell us, oh, we can't do this. I was like, who made that rule up? We can't do that. Who made that rule up? We can't do that. I was like, what? Oh, you getting all this stuff from your mama. I don't care what your mama said. I really don't. I'm telling you to do it this way. But sisters don't understand it. They think when they when they grew up and what their family said, that's no. Read that scripture again. Hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear. Uh huh. Forget. Do what? Forget. Forget. That's going into these sisters that have so much communication with their worldly family. Every day you got to talk to your worldly family. Read what the scripture says. Do what? Forget uh -huh. also thine own people. Read. And thy father's house. It says forget thine own people and thy father's house. Forget what you've been taught by your mother, by your aunties, by your girlfriends, so on and so forth. That don't matter. If I'm telling you I like you to what is, I don't care what Vogue magazine said I would like. I'm telling you I like this. So that's something y'all got to make sure you ingrain in these sisters' brains because they think they know more than you somehow. Well, I thought you like this. No, I'm telling you I like it like this. Well, I thought you might want me to cook it this way. But I said I love it the way you've been making it. So why would you change it? They did the, the, it's, it's, it's just not the key yeah. word was might right that was a smoke screen right there yep. watch out for the, that language brothers <laughs> all right that's a smoke screen all right so uh first corinthians 14 and 33 and teaching them what you like first corinthians 14 and 33 first corinthians chapter 14 verse 33 uh-huh for god is not the author of confusion uh -huh. but of peace as in all churches of the saints read let your women keep silence in the churches, Read. for it is not permitted unto them to speak, Read. but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. So they are commanded to be into obedience unto you men. Read. And if they will learn anything, uh -huh. let them ask their husbands at home. So that's where the majority of the teaching is supposed to take place, at the house. That's where you build just your wife up. So she can be according to your mind. Read. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Right. So make sure at home, that is where you're building your wife up. You're teaching her what you don't like, what you do like. You're going through the scriptures. And the scriptures that you're going over, brothers, is not deep. Exactly these scriptures that I'm reading, these are the scriptures you should be going over with. All that other stuff, you want to know the, the parables and so on and so forth. I don't deal with that. You ask me that, I'll say, well, why are my shirts fringed up? I don't really care about that. Good. I, that, I want to know. I mean, I've been trying to get this shirt for months. Hey, let me give you a funny story. Yes. Hey, my wife one time, we was, uh, she was reading Genesis. She asked me about symbolism in Genesis, the second chapter. I said, what's wrong with you? Why would you ask me that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Why, why would you do that? I don't know. I just thought it was funny. So keep it basic, brothers. Just keep it basic. Because... They need to do what these scriptures say. And a lot of times they're not falling in line with these things. So these are the things you go over. Don't go over deep stuff. Whatever you need to teach your children, that's what they need to know. Because they need to be able to teach the children. Alright? Uh, Tobit 8 and verse 6. Tobit chapter 8 and verse 6. And going into teaching your wife what you like. You gotta teach her. Gotta teach her that. She don't ever know, she ain't gonna do it correctly. This is the book of Tobit, chapter 8, verse 6. Uh -huh. Thou madest Adam uh -huh. and gavest him Eve. There you go again. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve. Showing you again, the woman is a possession. The woman is a possession unto that man. Read. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for a helper. For a helper. Read. And stay. That is their job. That is their job to help you. 
So guess what, brothers? When they say, you're not helping me. I don't, what? Yeah, not, not, brothers, don't, don't get me wrong. Not saying you can't help your wife. And y'all know the difference between when you're doing what you can and when you can't. But if you telling me I can't help you and I'm doing stuff, you no, no. You see I'm doing something, right? I'm not I'm not here for you. You're here for me. So you might want to turn around and examine the matter. What's going on? So read that again. Thou madest Adam uh -huh. and gavest him Eve, read. his wife, born helper and stay. Read. Of them came mankind. Read. Thou hast said, it is not good that man should be alone. Uh -huh. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. An aid like unto himself. An aid like unto himself. So, y'all got to make sure they know what you like so they can be that aid unto you. They can know what you like and what you don't like. So they can be that aid. Alright? 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Read. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. So it says to avoid fornication... Let every man have his own wife. Read. And let every woman have her own husband. So, dealing with what you, teaching her what you like. You know what your desires and needs are. You need to let your wife know. For you single brothers, they need to know that in advance. Alright? If you a hyper brother, I keep it PG. She need to know that beforehand. I'm telling you, last thing you want, you get married. And things ain't going the way you thought it was going to be. Y'all better make sure y'all on the same page. That's just like we tell older brothers. If you over your age, you don't need to be married. No young sister. <laughs> As a disclaimer, um, over diet just turned, I believe it was 79. 79. 79 last week. That brother's 79 years old. It looks good. It looks real good. That brother looks good for his age. Oh, crazy. All right. But in teaching her what you like, you might want to figure that out. You might want to figure that out beforehand. It'll alleviate a lot of problems. I'm telling you, because that's that's one of the biggest issues in marriage as well. So make sure you hash that out. Keep reading. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, mm -hmm. and let every woman have her own husband. Read. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and uh -huh. likewise also the wife unto the husband. Read. The wife have not power over I'm sorry, the wife have not power of her own body, uh -huh. but the husband, and likewise, also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. So, and a lot of times, I've seen it the other way, but a lot of times it's the sisters not living up to the brother's expectation. Make sure, make sure, brothers, that um, you explaining these scriptures thoroughly. Because why do um, y'all not have power over your body? It's to avoid what? To avoid fornication. So if you if you mad because he's doing something he ain't supposed to, and I'm telling you, well, I need A, B, and C, and you're not doing it, the scripture tells you what's gonna happen. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. It's outlining exactly. So there's no room around these scriptures. But if you don't ever teach it and tell them, then guess what? That falls on you. But it's your job to teach them. And after they go against that, then the most I deal with that. But the most I know, he ain't dumb. He said, hey, I'm giving them what needs to happen right now. So when it goes sideways, the brother or the sister, they got someone they can go in the scriptures to prove why, whatever happened. All right, Sirach 26 and 13. Sirach chapter 26 and verse 13. Now, somebody's going to get simple. A brother's going to get real simple. Does that scripture give us an excuse to commit fornication, brothers? No, no it does not. I just want to make sure. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 14. Mm -hmm. 13. 13. 
The grace of a wife delighteth her husband. Now, this is going into teaching her what you like. It says, the grace of a wife delighteth her husband. Read. And her, discre her discretion will fatten his bone. Now, her discretion is depending on what you like or dislike. That is how her discretion should be. Maybe you don't, maybe you like your bed not made when you get back home because you want to hop back in. Maybe you maybe you like some brothers might say don't if I put something on the sink don't wash it I want to use that same bowl when I get back or whatever your brothers got different quirks. That discretion is based upon you brothers and what you like. Me I want the bed made I want my computer in a certain place I want the house clean I want certain things but. I don't, I don't like doing a lot of talk when I get out. I just get home. I'm trying to get to work. Now it's time to work for the most high. So that's not the time to tell me that certain stuff need to get done. I'm going to get it done, but not right now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get stuff done. But that discretion is based upon you, brothers. Y'all might like to get home. Hey, tell me exactly what I need to do so I can knock it out right now. Then I can relax and do whatever I need to do. But that's based upon y'all. Y'all understand that? Just a side note. No brother wants to get home and be told a million things ain't been done the second he get home. I tell you that right now. I've been going all day and then you tell me the A, B, C, and D. Well, why the hell you ain't doing it? It ain't picking up a house. I mean, you could have did that. If it's such a problem that it needs to be addressed, the second I walk in the door, you could have done it. Am I right or am I wrong? That's right. Sheesh, you been that busy? You ain't been that busy. I guarantee you. All right, read verse 13 again. Verse 13, the grace of a wife delighteth her husband, uh -huh. and her discretion will fatten his bone. Read, a silent and loving woman. A what? A silent and loving woman. Brothers, when they say silent, that means she's a mute. No, <laughs> no that's not what that means. And my wife tried to get smart and say, well, I'm just going to be silent. Oh, the scriptures tell me to be silent, so I'm not talking. And that's not what that means. That means you're using discretion. You're not slamming doors. You're not yelling. You're not being unshamed faced. Whatever the words. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. You're yeah. not being bashful or boastful. That's what that's going into. Not saying you don't ever say a word. And I prove that in Proverbs when we go to Proverbs 31. Because it says when she opened her mouth, it's with wisdom. Right. Showing you that you can be righteous and speak. For a simple sisters, I'm going to be silent. And loving, like the scriptures tell me to be. So don't talk to me. That's not. It's not loving. It's being correct. Scary. Exactly. Think you're gonna try to kill me and get my life insurance or something like that? <laughs> scary. As hell. Read verse 14. Verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Read. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. As a what? Mind well instructed. That key part is what in that scripture, brothers. Well instructed. well instructed. There you go. How are they going to get that instruction from who? The husband's what? Well. At home. At home. There's nothing more beautiful than a mind well. It didn't say instructed. It says well instructed. Why? Because it's your job to tell your wife 18 times what to do because they will not get it right until you tell them that many times. That's why it says it just like that. It says a mind well instructed. Y'all understand that? That means it's your job to guess what? When they mess up, correct them, correct them, correct them, correct them, correct them, so on and so forth. That's what you got to do. That's your job. That's your job. Because like we said, of her came the beginning of sin. Of her, it says, when, the, when there's no hedges, the possession is spoiled. So it's natural for them to go sideways, to go off that uh, strict and narrow path. Y'all understand that? Keep reading. Verse, was that 15? Yep, 15. 15. A shame-faced and faithful woman is a double grace. Uh -huh. And her con her continent mind cannot be valued. Right. There's nothing more precious than a woman when she's doing what she's supposed to do. When you ain't got to reiterate the same stuff over and over. There's no better feeling when I come home and my room is clean, the computer's open, my seat's ready. I know some food finna come out in a little bit. That's the best feeling ever. That's a good feeling. It's like, dang. Sister's got talent. Right. I could never clean a house that good. It feels good to come to a clean house. It's it's beautiful, baby. That's a good feeling. But some sisters, you gotta tell them that. They think, well, maybe he won't the house dirty. I don't know. That's what he likes. No sisters. Few brothers might. I don't know. 
Because you die, you're in the military, you might like it rough. <laughs> you like it like you're in the Congo. <laughs> but most brothers, they want the house nice. Regardless of the situation. That's what we want. Make the best out of something. Alright, so, next thing you gotta teach your wife is that it's her job. It's her job, her responsibility to take care of the house. It's not a suggestion. And I'm gonna go through the scriptures to prove it. It's their job, because guess what? I'll take care of the outside, you take care of the inside. I, you don't have to tell me to cut the grass. You ain't gotta tell, I don't ask you for help uh, getting the branches up. So don't ask me for help cleaning the dishes. That's just the way it works. Let's get it, Sirach 26, we're gonna read verse 16. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 20, 26 and 16. Yep, all right. As the sun, when it ariseth in the high heaven, uh -huh. so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. So is the beauty. It says that it's beautiful in the what? It is, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. In the what? Ordering of her house. In the ordering of the house. That is, that's a beautiful thing when a wife does that. That's not something that she might do. That she may do. It's a beautiful thing for her to do that. Why? Because that's what she's supposed to do. It ain't by chance that a lot of y'all brothers can't design inside the house. That ain't your job. You don't know how to do, set the things in order just right, so to speak. You can get the final say so, according to Numbers 30, right? Yeah. yeah. But for the, let her set it up, and then you say, all right, that look good. Let's move this here, this here, and then. Let me put this right here. And if she a righteous woman, she gonna be like, okay, yes, Lord. If she wicked, she gonna get mad and upset. I can't do this, I can't do that. No, you can't. Because I got the final say so. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. All right. From there, let's go to 1 Timothy 5 and 14. First Timothy 5 and 14. Going into that it's your wife's job, responsibility, her duty to take care of that house. That's her, that should be her first love. You, the house, and the children. Read that. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 14. Uh-huh. I will therefore that the younger woman marry. Uh-huh. Bear children. So it says marry, bear children. So I said, my order was wrong. Love the man, love the children, love the house. In that order. That's what the scriptures say. Read that again. I will therefore that the younger woman marry, mm -hmm. bear children, uh -huh. guide the house. Do what? Guide the house. Read. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So it's their job to guide that house. Underneath guiding that house is cleaning the house, maintenance in the house, making sure things are, uh, the su supplies are, are are, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Are there? Are stock, there we go. Making sure everything stocks so I don't go to the bathroom. Put the damn toilet paper at. That's your job. That ain't my job. That's a bad feeling. That's a horrible feeling. Especially when you've been at work all day and you've been home. You knew it wasn't no toilet paper now. Get it done. That's your job. That's their job. All right? Read, go, let's go to Titus chapter two and verse three. Showing you that these things are their responsibility you won't see this about the man. Have you read that the man's supposed to guide the house yet? No. It says the her duty. We're going to read it. Matter of fact, let's go there right now. Go to Exodus uh, 21. Where it shows you what the man's supposed to do. Right. right. Yep. Because sisters, they don't, they, they think we're the same. We're not the same. This is the book of Exodus chapter 21 and verse 10. Nine. You want nine? Okay, yeah. nine. And if ye be I'm sorry. And if he have betrothed her unto his son, uh -huh. he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. Read. If he take him another wife. Another wife. So this other wife has the same uh, responsibilities. The same things are supposed to be taken care of with her. Which are, read. Her food. Food. Her raiment. Her raiment. And her duty of marriage uh -huh. shall not, shall he not diminish. Food, clothes, and sex. That's your job. That's your job to make sure she has those things. And of course, we got house. We read about that in Sirach 31. She needs a house to cover her shame. So after that, 
Uh, yes, sir. Question. Uh, Speak up. Yeah, the mic. Did David break that rule when he got mad at one of his wives for um, talking about him when he danced out his clothes? Did he break that rule as far as what? When you say food, um, um, right. duty of marriage. Right. Did he, um, cause he said he, he wouldn't give her no more children or something like that. Mm, well, she spoke out of turn. She did. She did. She spoke out of something she had nothing to be speaking about. He was rejoicing before the Lord because they got they got the uh, the uh, the Ark of the Covenant back. Being simple, thinking she know better. But the Most High God, if he had a problem with it, he would have said something. He dealt with David like nobody else. So, yeah, thinking she know more than 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 the man. That's what that's what happened. But no, I wouldn't say he was out of turn. They don't say that nowhere. Um, Titus 2, Titus 2, in verse 3. And these are the things your sisters should be going over in that Titus 2 meeting. This is what they need to be hearing. So guess what? When they get married, I don't got to tell these brothers this in counseling. The sisters already know. They should already be getting built up on how to deal with a man, what their role is. Read that. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. Uh -huh. The aged woman likewise. That they be in behavior as becometh holiness, uh -huh. not false accusers, Read. not given to much wine, teachers of good things, uh -huh. that they may teach the young women to be sober. That they may teach the young women. So these are things that must be taught. These are things that must be taught to these younger women. Read. To love their husbands. You must be taught how to love your husband. Right now you don't know, sisters. Read. To love their children. You must be taught how to love your children. Read. To be discreet. Uh-huh. Chase. Uh-huh. Keepers at home. Uh-oh. There you go again. Now that's three different precepts we don't found. To be a what? To be discreet. Chase. Keepers at home. Keepers at home. Take care of the house. That is your responsibility. It ain't no, I need to do this, I need to do that. You want to you wanna leave the house, but the house ain't taken care of. Now, that's your first responsibility. That's like me saying, I want to go to the mall, but I ain't go to work. That don't make sense. You can't do that. So don't get mad when I say, no, you're not going there. The house look a mess. Take care of the house first. That's your first responsibility. I don't care if you ain't had no free time. Make some free time and finish the house first. Because that's your responsibility. Proverbs 31, sister's favorite scriptures. Everybody want to be a proverb 31. Oh, Let's real get quick, it. officer, real yes, quick sir. about yes, that. Um, shoot on the women guy in the house. All right, I'm a sister's man. A lot of y'all got jobs. Yep. All right, a lot of y'all work. I'm 10 hour days or eight hour days. It ain't no excuse to come home. I'm tired now. Because uh, your first job is what? God, God taking care of the house. All right? Y'all heard that? It's coming from Officer David. Officer David. <laughs> Officer David said he don't want to hear it. You put in eight for the white man, what you gonna do for the black guy? Uh-oh. I'm the black guy on the earth. So I don't want to hear that. You single sisters, when y'all get married? Ah, uh -huh. I don't care if you're working. Make sure you get done. Quick precept about love real quick, Officer. Yep. I'm gonna read it real quick. Uh -huh. Colossians 3 and 18. Going into when it says, love be chaste. He said, um, Teach the younger women how to love their husbands, right? right. Watch this. It says, uh, verse 18, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Now I'm going to read verse 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So when it's going into the sisters loving their husbands, not it's, it's not just talking about, oh, babe, I love you, things like that. It's your actions. That's, that's how the Most High God sees it. That's how the husband sees it, too. Okay, It's a bunch of lip service if you're saying you love me, so on and so on, but you won't do a thing I say. All right, so keep, keep in mind as well. Yep, exactly, exactly. Proverbs 31, 27. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 7. 27. 27, excuse me. She looketh well. Read verse 26 first for the silent sisters. <laughs> verse 26. She openeth her mouth. She does what? She openeth her mouth uh -huh. with wisdom. Read. And in her kind 
And in her tongue is the law of kindness. Showing you that sisters speak. Righteous sisters speak, but they speak with wisdom, with the scriptures. Read. She looketh well to the ways of her household. She does what? Looketh well to the ways of her household. Uh huh. And eateth not the bread of idleness. And eateth not the bread of idleness. So she's not watching TV all day and then certain stuff ain't getting done. Right. She don't eat the bread of idleness. She's always busy. There's no way a shirt doesn't get fringed for months. Because she don't eat the bread of idleness. Single sisters, I'm just, I'm just warning you brothers. I'm warning you. I'm trying to give you warning. These are the things you need to make sure she know before you get married. Or you'll be very upset. So it says she does not eat the bread of idleness. Jump to verse 15. Verse 15. She riseth also while it is yet night. She does what? Riseth also while it is yet night. Hmm. Brothers, how can you rise while it's still nighttime? Somebody, somebody give me an understanding on that. Come on, somebody, somebody who know. Pass the mic. I want one of these men dance. You got that? What's that? What's that? You want a high five? <laughs> that goes in early in the morning. The there you go. There you go. She rises at night, meaning she's up before the sun gets up, because her desire is to her husband. Not saying you ain't gonna do that every day. I get it. I get it. Sometimes she might sleep with. You. But the Proverbs 31 says she's going to do it every day. Oh, you know? That's a cut. That's a cut. I'm just telling you what she's going to do. It ain't going to be 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, they just getting up. No, that ain't what's going to happen. Read that again, Austin. Uh, verse 27. Mm -hmm. She looketh well to the ways of her household. No, 15. 15. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Verse 15. She riseth also while it is yet night. She riseth also while it is yet night. What does that also let you know? That everything was done in order so she could get up early. She ain't up all night doing things. Because all of it was already taken care of because she didn't eat the bread of idleness all day. Read it again. She riseth also while it is yet night. So that means she get up early. Also been over my house. Well, you remember sometimes we we get woken up. What you get woken up by at my house? I ain't been in a while. Yeah. Well, when, when, you, when we used to grow up, my mother. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, at your house. Yeah. At my house. Oh, I mean, when we when growing up. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Food. Yeah. Yeah. All that good stuff. My wife would be. I mean, my my mom, my mother would be up four or five in the morning, just about every day cleaning the house, True. waking us up. So, so a lot of y'all know me. I wake up real early in the morning. I also know we used to get to it all the time because I call them five in the morning. What's up, bro? What's up? What you doing? That's how I am. I wake up early. But the scriptures back that up. That's what a woman does. Now you sisters that work, I get that. Okay, you got to get some rest. But you sisters that's at house at, at at the house, that's what a that's what the outline is supposed so, to be. You saying it's no excuse? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying there's no excuse. No excuse. Okay. I'm saying there's no excuse. They might have to get some sleep because they work. I get that. But you sisters that's at home, right. get it done. Bring it out. Get it done. Yes. And then you go to sleep. You right. see your husband off, then you can go to sleep. Read it again one more time. Because they, they ain't hearing that. Uh, Proverbs chapter 31 verse 15. Uh huh. She riseth also while it is yet night. While it is yet night. Because the husband rises when it's night too. Exactly. And that's crazy. That's why she got to get up. Right. Because he got to go work 12 plus hours. Exactly. For the white man. Exactly. Oh, crazy. All right. But, she, but what does she do when she get up though? Often? She rises also while it is yet night. Uh huh. And giveth meat. And does what? Giveth meat. Uh huh. To her household. Read. And a portion to her baby. So she makes sure everybody is fed as well. That's what y'all got to teach y'all wives. Now, some of y'all might not be breakfast people. That's fine. She get up and she makes sure your apple is in the bag. That's me. You know, I'm on a diet. So I ain't eating heavy in the morning. But you make sure I get something. Right. And you see me out. That's what the scriptures say. Let's go to Proverbs 6 and 4. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 4. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 4. Uh-huh. Give not sleep to thine eyes. Do what? 
Give not sleep to thine eyes. Read. Nor slumber to thine eyelids. So for you sleepyheads, brothers and sisters alike, don't be like that. Jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Uh -huh. Consider her ways. Read. And be wise. Read. Which having no guide, overseer. Oh, man, this is a cut. Oh, yep. This is cut. Yep. It says, which having no guide. No guide. But your sister's got a guide. Y'all got a hedge. Your hedge tell you exactly what to do and how he wants you to do it. That's why he said, go to the ant. They'll show you how it's done. Which having no guide, uh -huh. overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer. Read. And gathereth her food in the harvest. Read. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? So it's letting you know something. If you a sleepy person, Scripture says you a sluggard. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? Read. When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? When are you going to get up out of that bed, sluggard? Read. Yet a little sleep. Uh huh. A little slumber. Uh huh. A little folding of the hands to sleep. Read. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth and thy want as an armed man. So, let's go for you men. You brothers sleep in all day and wonder why you can't get a job. Because you don't slept it away. Early bird what? Early bird catch the worm. I love waking up in the morning going to work. That's a great feeling. Especially for some of you brothers like Officer David. I'm envious of Officer David. He can wake up and do his work early in the morning. He know he's doing it for himself. He can get off when he want to. Likewise, you sisters, you know you got all these tasks that you got to do. You got to clean this. You got to clean that. You got to, okay, well get up and get it done. You can be done at 7 o'clock if you get up at 5. Then you got the rest of the day to do whatever you want to do. But don't tell me when I get home at 7, I'm so busy. Huh? But when I left, you asleep. Come on, man. We gotta, we gotta apply these scriptures. All right, so, last one. You must teach your wife to respect you. This is a, you must teach your wife to respect you. Sirach 26 and verse 24. And this one is the biggest offense. This one is the biggest offense. Because when sisters do this, that's, that's it's not good at all. Sirach chapter 26 and verse 24. Sirach chapter 26, verse 24. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. So, a woman that honoreth her husband is wise. That's a wise woman. Read. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. Uh-huh. A loud crying woman and a scold. Hold on, you read verse 24? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Verse 24. A dishonest woman contemneth shame. Read. But an honest woman will reverence her husband. What does reverence mean, brothers? Respect. A wise woman will respect her husband. So does that mean they slamming doors in their husband's face? Does that mean they talking back to their husband? I'm talking to you, brothers. No, sir. No, sir. Because you got to be able to explain this to your wives of what it means to reverence. So guess what? When she's doing certain stuff that's not reverencing, you can go to the scripture. Hey, sis. You're not, you're not living up to the scripture. The scripture says you're supposed to reverence your husband. So this talking back, this getting loud, that's not in the scriptures. I'm just letting you know because I love it. The scripture says rebuke. Rebuke your neighbor. So I'm just correcting you so you can get it fixed. And they're going to get mad. They're going to get upset because sisters hate correction. Oh, they hate correction. But it's all right. They're going to be all right. They're going to be all right. Just they got to get it fixed. And guess how you can be the great example? When you get corrected, you're able to take it and change. Y'all understand that, brothers? Alright. Uh, read verse 25. Verse 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. The scripture says a woman that does those things loud in their husband's face, talking back, whispering underneath their breath, all that stuff. It says you count as a dog. Read. But she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. But a shamefaced woman will fear the Lord. Read. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. Right. When you see a sister that respect and honor her husband, that's a wise woman. That is a wise woman. Read. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. Right. You see the sister that talk back, 
Don't want to do nothing to husband. Say disrespectful. It says she shall be counted ungodly of all. Ungodly. That's an ungodly system. Now, I'm going to say this much, brothers. These scriptures, these descriptions of what we're reading about with these women, did this come after two years, three years, four years, five years? How do you get to this level? Experience. Huh? Experience. Experience, right? Takes time. The same way, how long Bishop the thing been the truth? 30 years. Almost 30 some years, right? So you got to be what with your wife? Patient. Patient. You got to be the two, two P words. You got to be persistent and patient. Make sure they don't get those two mixed up. Just because I'm being patient, don't mean you're doing something right. Right. That ain't what that means. That means I'm being patient. But I'm going to be persistent because I'm going to keep correcting you. Y'all understand that? And all that comes with, that's the skill. In First Peter it says, um, dwell with your wife according to knowledge. you got to use wisdom in how you deal with your wife. Y'all understand that? All right. Um, First Peter 3. First Peter 3 and verse 1. First Peter chapter three and verse one. Your brothers, y'all been following along? Sir, sir. Some of y'all ready to go home and reteach this to your wife already? Yeah. We going over the officer class. Let's go over this real quick. <laughs> what was that one where you said you gotta listen to me? <laughs> First Peter three. Oh, this is laughing. <laughs> Gave these brothers the cheat code. They got the cheat code on marriage. All crazy. Yeah, they finally got some bullets for them guns. Right. right. They got, they got bullets. Uh, you better shoot them. You better shoot them. You know they're going to shoot that. They're going to shoot them. First Peter 3 and 1. Read that. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Uh -huh. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband. Uh huh. That if any obey not the word. There you go. If you're not in the subjection to your husband, sisters, you are not obeying the word. It don't go together. <laughs> on a, a disobedient wife, that's not in the scriptures. That's not in the scriptures at all. So when they're doing that, they're going outside of the scriptures. <laughs> Read. Likewise, ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Read. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Read. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of the plaiting the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel. Read. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of the meek and quiet spirit, mm -hmm. which is in the sight of God of great price. Read. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. So the women of old adorned themselves with being in subjection unto their husbands. What does that mean, brothers? They wore that as a badge of honor. There you go. They took pride in respecting their husband. It wasn't just saying, uh, Lord, when everybody's at school. Uh, it's when he came home and nobody's there. That's what they took pride in. They took pride in having that respect and honor for their husbands. Three. Verse uh, six. Verse six. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Doing what? Calling him Lord. She called Abraham Lord. Because she reverenced him, as the scripture says. She understood that through that man, that is how she's going to get salvation. Because without him, the possession is going to be what? Spoiled. Spoiled. But you sisters don't see your man as that, as that um, way to receive salvation. Y'all don't see that. You want to do it your way. Or how you think it should be done. You guys that off? No. Alright, from there, let's go to Ephesians 4 and 22. Going into respect, that respect that she must have for you. Got to teach her to respect you. You got to show her. Sarah called Abraham Lord. Alright. Scripture says you got to reverence your husband. Read that. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22. Uh -huh. That ye put off concerning the former... God is 22, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
That was my fault. It's Ephesians 5 and 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Do what? Submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Read. As unto the Lord. As what? Unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. That's your job. That man plays that, that role of Christ in your household. So when you murmuring under your breath about your husband, when you get in an attitude with your husband, what does the scripture say? Every idle word what? It's going to be accounted for. It is going to be accounted for. Every idle word. So watch what you say. Watch how you treat your husband. It's going to come back. But think about it. If Think about, that says a lot about that, that sister, right? Yep. If she doesn't want to listen to the man that she married, what does that say about her? If she does, if she can't uh, follow a godly man or someone who's supposed to be godly, that's saying that's saying a lot about herself. So if a sister's in that spirit, mumbling, back talking her husband, check yourself first. That's 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 a reflection of your own self. Three, <laughs> verse twenty-three. Verse twenty-three. For the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. He is the what? Savior of the body. He is the savior of the body. That's y'all job, you men. Isaiah 3 and 16. Going into reverencing. Going into reverencing and respecting you. And you having to teach her that. Because I'm going to show you why you got to teach her these things. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 16. Uh-huh. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. The daughters of Zion are what? Haughty. The daughters of Zion are haughty. Disrespectful. Think they all that. They think they got it going on. That's why you got to teach them what respect is. They don't know. They do not know. These sisters watch, uh, what's the shows on VH1? I ain't got cable no more. But all these different shows. It's ridiculous. They teach the exact opposite of what the scriptures say. Over and over and over again. That's what's been replayed in these sisters' minds. Over and over and over. They don't know. You got to teach them according to the scriptures. Alright. Genesis 24 and verse 6. I got to preach it with that. Yep. Uh, let's go to 1 Kings 15 real quick. Uh, going into what the office is talking about in regards to the daughters of uh, Zion being haughty. Uh, was stretched forth next. Going into thinking that they, they run things. Go to um, verse 13. 1 Kings 15, 13. 1 Kings chapter 15 and verse 13. And also Micah, his mother, even when he removed from being queen, because she had made an idol in a grove, and Asa destroyed her idol and burnt it by the brook Kidron. Because a sister, she's not supposed to be in any type of rulership. Because just like the scriptures say, uh, that officer brought out earlier, is if you give her any any room of leadership, she's going to gather abroad. She's going to go astray. She's going to go off the course. Showing here what? She was a queen, but that's why we don't refer to none of our sisters as queens. Yeah, they are the princesses of, of the Most High God, but they're no queens. Because when you're a queen, that means you're in a form of leadership. No, nah, that's not what the Bible says. The only queen of Israel was what? She was wicked. All right, she was wicked. That's that's why we, don't, we do not... Uh, Call our sisters queens. If y'all ever heard that, don't ever hear. Don't ever call a sister a queen. That's some African Nubian stuff. That's not Israel. It's not Israel stuff. All right. All right. All pretty. Genesis twenty-four verse six. Genesis twenty-four and verse six. Going into that reverence, and I'm gonna give you an example of how our foremothers reverences their husbands. Twenty-four verse six. All right, verse 60. We're going to read down to 65. All right. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and that thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well, Lahad Roy, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes 
And when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. All right, so Rebecca's about to meet her Lord. He sees them. She see, they see each other, but she wants to get confirmation. Read verse 65. Verse 65. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? So she said, Who is this coming to meet us? Read. And the servant has said, It is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. Right. She made it. It was a difference between him and that and the servant that was carrying it. She wanted to make sure she showed some reverence, some respect towards that man. Do y'all understand that, brothers? Y'all gotta put that into y'all wives. It's not when you see me, you ain't just seeing another Negro. This is your Lord you seeing. So it should it should come with a certain level of respect and pride when you see your husband. Alright? It's not just seeing another inward, so to speak. Alright, so we're gonna close. I got three more scriptures. Sirach 25 and 1. So we're not gonna close. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna close. I'm just letting you know we get there. You know? Before you land the plane. <laughs> Officer, they always say, "All right, we're about twenty miles out, and uh, we'll be declining." I want to thank you all for joining us today on this flight. And then they land that thing. You know, you got to give them some proof. You know, twenty-five. Yep. Yeah. In verse one, this is the book of Sirach, chapter twenty-five, verse one. Uh huh. And three things I was beautified. Three things were beautiful. Read and stood up, beautiful. Be both before God and men. Uh -huh. The unity of brother. The unity of brother. The love of neighbors. Uh -huh. A man and a wife that agree together. They agree together in what? The law in the scriptures. In the scriptures. That's what they agree together in. That's a beautiful thing when they're on the same page. When that sister shows honor and respect to her husband, and that husband does the same thing unto their wife, that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. I just put it like this, brothers. You got to be pushing the truth. She got to see you pushing the truth at such a high level that she wants to do that much for you. And when that's when that's clicking, then things will be good. Things will be good. All right, Amos three and three. Amos chapter three and verse three. This is the book of Amos, chapter three and verse three. Mm -hmm. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So, can two walk together except they be agreed? So this ain't going to happen. What we just went over, what you're teaching your wife, it's not going to happen if y'all not on the same page. It's not going to happen. You got to sit down and explain to her what you like, what you dislike. You got to explain to her how to respect you, so on and so forth. What needs to get done, so on and so forth. But y'all got to be, you can't walk together unless y'all on the same page. And that, that page is the Bible. Last scripture. 1 Corinthians 7 and 28. So all the scriptures we went over, they're all beautiful and dandy and they sound great. But they don't mean nothing if you don't apply. And even when you do apply them, there's still a little clause in the back. A little clause that most I put in there to let you know not to get your hopes too high. <laughs> it sounds great. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 28. Uh -huh. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. Uh -huh. And if a virgin marry, she have not sinned. Read. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. You are still going to have trouble in the flesh. That's what the scripture said. Because in you and in her, both of y'all are working and building yourself to line up with these scriptures. So sometimes things are going to go sideways. That's what happens. But make sure you can bring it back to the Bible and get it fixed. Y'all understand that, brothers? Yeah. All right. Shalom, this I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, 
please make sure to subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.